Hi, I'm Chris. You're watching the third part in the Bosch tutorial series. In this video, we'll look at configuring the Bosch director we actually installed in the previous video. Um, and we did install Bosch director to a vSphere environment. If you don't have a vSphere environment and you want to install Bosch director to some other environment, maybe your laptop or AWS, um, you should check out the videos of my colleague Martin Karels. I'll link them in down below. Um, so check those out if you want to run Bosch on anything else than, than vSphere basically. So in this video, we'll be configuring a Bosch director. Uh, but before we dive into that, well, let's quickly talk about the different configurations we know inside the Bosch director. So there's three of them. Here they are. It's the CPI config, which configures the cloud provider interface. You might remember from the previous video, as part of a Bosch director, we also install a CPI, the cloud provider interface. And this is what Bosch connects to the underlying infrastructure. So there are CPIs for a lot of different platforms and we happen to use the vSphere CPI. So there's a separate config for that, but you don't really need to configure your Bosch director for your CPI other than the configuration we did already during the installation. So we won't be touching on CPI config today uh, because we don't really need it to get up and running. Then there is runtime config, and I will just won't discuss runtime config for now. We'll get back to that in a later video. The config I want to talk about today is the cloud config. And the cloud config basically specifies your availability zones, your network, and all the VM types. So let's dive into that. So let me switch here to my uh, to browser. And we go to Bosch.io. Um, I'll go to the reference. And the reference has a entry for the director cloud config. And it also contains some examples. So what I'll do, I'll go to the vSphere uh, example. And this one, yes. So let me copy this cloud config example. Copy that. Go to my editor. Atom in this case, and let's create a new file. I will call the file cloudconfig.yaml. It's all YAML files. Everything in Bosch is a YAML file basically. So let me copy that in there. And I'll quickly go through this. I'll zoom in a little bit. All right, so the first thing it defines are availability zones. So you'll see name Z1 for zone one, and then cloud properties. So in Bosch, everything under cloud properties is CPI specific. So the configuration under cloud properties in this case is vSphere specific. So for vSphere, you need to define clusters basically. So we'll change this to what we need for our environment. Um, and we'll call the availability zone AZ1 instead of C1. And then as we've seen in the previous video, my cluster is called cluster. So if your cluster is called anything else, you need to put in the name the actual name of the cluster, so the vSphere cluster. Um, I don't have a second availability zone for now, so I'll just go ahead and remove that. Then the next part is VM type. So a VM type, you might have seen something similar if you're using AWS. Um, in AWS, you have these xlarge, xlarge mem, xlarge disk, etc. So uh, Bosch uses a similar concept. So instead of when we need a new virtual machine, instead of just specifying CPU, RAM, and disk, we use these predefined types. So we'll see our default type, and if we request a default virtual machine, we'll get two CPUs, one gig of RAM, and three gigs of disk. Um, so those are, those are the two in the example, uh, one called default and one called large. So the large one is the same amount of CPU, which has more RAM and more disk, um, which is fine for now. So I'll leave it in for now. Oh. Probably need to create more in later videos later on. And we also need to specify disk types, and we also have a default disk type and a large disk type, which is also fine for now. We'll just keep the default. And then we'll have the networks. So they call their network default in the example. Um, I'll go ahead and change that, and I'll call it labnet, because it's the network in my lab. Um, you can call this anything you want. Um, just choose a name that's recognizable, that means anything to you. It's a type manual and vSphere CPI only supports manual networks. Manual doesn't mean we have to manually set IP addresses on these VMs. 
but it means that there is no other way of assigning the IP addresses. So there's no DHCP um, and the IS system doesn't assign IP addresses itself. So Bosch can go ahead and just assign IP address from a pool we specify here. So we need to specify the range. Dot zero, yes, then the gateway. So this might be different for your network. These are just my details. So the availability zone I'm going to use this in is the availability zone we just defined, which is AZ1. Then the DNS this is the Google DNS, which is fine for now. If you have an internal DNS, just specify that one. Then on the cloud properties, so again, these cloud properties are uh, CPI specific. So in the case of vSphere, we need to specify the um, port group name for our network. So in my case, I use the default port group name in vSphere, which is VM network. So then we again see range, etc. So this is a second network that's defined here. Um, I'm just going to remove it. So we'll end up with just one network. And there's one more thing I need to add in here. So not only do I need to specify the range and the gateway, um, because if I do this, then Bosch will just start assigning IP addresses from two in this case. So we'll skip one because that's a gateway. Then we'll start at two. Um, there's also already something on number two in my case. So I need to specify a reserved range. And a reserved range is what's actually not available to Bosch to assign. So in my case, this is what my reserve range is. So um, I'll reserve from one up to um, 200, let's say. And then specify another one. Uh, that starts at 220. And that ends at 254. So just basically leave a gap from 2 to 220, 290. Um, or I can assign, uh, Bosch can assign those to my virtual machines. So the last part is the compilation block. Um, and the compilation block specified what kind of VM we want to use for the compiled jobs. So when Bosch installs a release, as we've seen in the, in the previous video, um, it actually compiles the software which is in the release. Uh, and to do that, it needs compile workers. So we can specify the amount of workers we need, which is Default is five. Um, I'll set it to three for now. Uh, we can specify if we want to reuse compilation VMs. Um, so if we set this to false, it will delete the VM after each compiled job and then create a new one for a new compiled job. So it takes more time. Uh, so if you set this to true, you save a little bit of time on your, uh, on your compiled jobs. Then we need to specify the availability zone um, to use for the compiled jobs. And well, if just one availability zone, I choose AZ1. The VM type, which is large in this case, and the network. So I don't have the default network anymore. We have the LabNet network. So I'll save this file and I'll go into my console. Zoom this in a little bit. And we'll upload the configuration into the Bosch Director. Before we do that, let's see what configuration is already there. So, Bosch minus E tutorial, and then we'll ask it for configs. So as you can see, there's no configs. There's another command called cloud config, and there's no cloud config either. So let's upload the cloud config. Update cloud config is the command we need to use. And we'll use the cloud config.yaml we just created. And it will show us what it's going to add to the cloud config. So you see a plus in front of every line. So it's going to add all those lines to the currently empty cloud config. So yes, and that's it. It just updated the config. So when we now do Bosch e tutorial cloud config, it will show us what we just uploaded. So we can check if everything is, uh, is there. And if you now go to Bosch e tutorial configs, it will show us we have one cloud config installed. Um, 
So we could stop here, actually. We have a default cloud config. We are basically ready to do our first deployment. I want to show you one more thing, which is it's, it's rather new in, in Bosch. We also have the availability of... We also have the possibility of uploading multiple configs of the same type. So we saw the three different types, the CPI, the runtime config and cloud config. And currently we have one cloud config uploaded and we can see it's the default cloud config. So this one is used by everyone. We have the possibility to take part of the cloud config, put it in a different file and upload it as a named config as it's called. So let, let me show you that. So let's, let's take the network as an example. So we'll take this part of the network config. Um, we'll cut it out. And then we'll create a new file. And we'll call it network config.yaml. And we'll just paste the network config in there. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and save the cloud config.yaml as well. So what we can do now is update the cloud config. Update cloud config with the new cloud config we just created. And it will show us it's going to remove some lines from the default cloud config. So we're fine with that. And what we can do then is Bosch e tutorial. And then we can update config type cloud. And we give the name and we call it network config. And we'll use the network config YAML file. Do that. And if you now ask Bosch for the configs it has. Uh, tutorial configs. It will show a default config and a network config. So those will be basically be merged. So it's, it's all one config. Um, but comes from two different files. And the advantage of this is that the network config can now be maintained by maybe another team. So maybe you want to have the networking team manage your networking config. Um, so you can put the network config maybe in a different Git repo, uh, have it managed by another team, and it will, that team will be able to update their own cloud config file. Um, or their own part of the cloud config file without having to update the whole cloud config file all at once. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll actually start deploying software onto Bosch. Um, if you have any questions until then, reach out on Twitter or leave a comment below. If you like this video, like it, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.